if he's right, one day drones will be everywhere. Chris Anderson started playing around with robots in the backyard with his kids on a whim. Now his company, 3D Robotics, manufactures self-flying planes, helicopters, blimps around the world. But his flight to CEO has been anything but direct. He's been a punk rocker, a particle physicist, a journalist, editor-in-chief of Wired Magazine for 12 years and a three-time author. Joining me today on Studio 1.0, inventor, father, and founder, Chris Anderson. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, good to be here. Great to have you here. What are your drones capable of? Ah, now that's the exciting part. So the drones started by simply being able to kind of fly on their own. The big driver right now is putting GoPros in the air, mm -hmm. just capturing video. The ability of drones to sort of take those cameras and pull back, to see just not just you, but your context, your surroundings, to sweep around you, to do those circles, to kind of capture your life the way a Hollywood director will, really would without any skill required. That's what a drone can do with video. Then in a commercial um, uh, domain, to be able to map the world, to digitize our, you know, our surroundings. We can do 2D maps, we can do 3D modeling. We can scan any building, anywhere, with a touch of a button, turn that into a 3D model. What industries will drones revolution? So today it's a consumer revolution. It's starting to become a commercial revolution as well. The two big industries are agriculture, where crop mapping leads to Smarter, far smarter farming, uh, being able to minimize the chemicals and the water use in farms, increase the output. And then construction is the other big industry. We can only manage what we can measure. And how do we digitize the workflow? How do we digitize construction? And the answer is use drones to model, map, do a 3D scan of these things, turn them into something that can be then put back into the digital workflow. So you can see that the progress of construction, the deviation, the, 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 you know, the, the changes from day to day, without it even being there. What's the coolest thing you've seen a drone do? That's a, there's a long, <laughs> long list. Choose one. So one of the things we have is what's called a follow me function. And as you bike through the park or ski or whatever, the drone follows you, keeping the camera on you, orbiting around to automatically capture this moment. And then when you're done, you push a button, it flies back home. What do you make of the interest of Facebook, Google, and Amazon in an industry that you've been in for eight years. Amazon is interested in drone delivery and Google is interested in a number of things including drone delivery but also using drones to provide internet access to the uh, developing world. Um, I think both of them are, are thrilling. Um, you know, Obviously there's a great technology companies with deep pockets. This is a classic swords to plowshares moment. We are taking what's formerly military technology and putting in the hands of civilians with the hope that the positive uses will drown out those old military uses. And Amazon's video going viral, I think, was, was the first time that many people thought of drones in a non-military non context. How likely is it that drones are going to be delivering my Amazon packages? Uh, your Amazon packages and to your home, that's a ways off. How but, long? Uh, a decade. But um, delivering to a, um, let's say, a, a center where you could pick up a package. So warehouse to warehouse, we can do that today. Delivering to rural areas, that would be pretty easy as well. But once you get sort of like delivering to an arbitrary front doorstep, that's a little hard. As the sort of home delivery, the sort of you know, instantaneous gratification movement takes off, that we could start to get to the next generation of mailboxes where certain homes end up with kind of well-defined kind of machine-readable delivery boxes. So you're saying this is going to happen? This will happen, maybe it's a decade out, but it will happen. I mean, it's happening right now in very limited ways. DHL has an experiment in Germany where they're delivering pharmaceuticals to an island. Um, you're going to start to see it happening in places that were high value, small high value packages delivered to safe areas. Is there any reason it won't happen? Regulation in the United States, it's not legal right now. I know the FAA is considering changing the rules now. How are those conversations going? Well, um, they're going. Um, the FAA's um, mandate is the safety of the national airspace. And um, it was designed around manned aircraft, uh, relatively large aircraft, um, you know, human, human pilots and passengers. What we have here is a completely different kind of problem. These are small vehicles. I mean, this is large by, by the standards. They can be as small as your, as your hand. Drones are now so small and flying so low and so smart that they can essentially navigate the space themselves. We don't need air traffic control. We don't need to treat them like a 747. And we, we just, we're arguing for a sandbox. Tell us what altitude, 
what distance, what weight and speed, um, you know, what zones, what areas they're allowed to fly in, and then create this open spectrum, this open air, airspace, where we, the technology industry, can innovate with minimal regulation. How safe are they now, and how much safer will they be in the future? So, so the safety really has a lot to do with just the size. Um, if it's the size of your hand, and weighs no more than your phone, and is made out of something like, like foam, um, even if it were to fall out of the sky, it's lighter than a bird. At that point, there's an intrinsic safety to it. Um, if it were to hit you know, hit your house, it wouldn't do any damage. If it were to hit you, it wouldn't do much damage. Again, make it small, small enough so that it doesn't seem dangerous. The other safety measure is technological. Um, putting in place, you know, these things are smart. They don't, they don't fall asleep. They're not texting. They're not distracted. They know where they are at, are at all times. And when robots are done right, they can be safer than humans. How about Google's drone delivery operation? How, how have you taken a close look at it, and, and what do you think? So Google um, went with a um, what's called a fixed wing, an airplane model, which is good for long distances. Amazon went for a helicopter model, which has got a vertical takeoff ability, but better for short distances. Um, both of them are, you know, have their have their place. The the Google one is um, very smart. Um, it has the ability to you know use aerodynamics to travel for tens or maybe even hundreds of miles. But it's quite difficult to you know hover in place and dangle a package down on a string and then, you know, and then land um, equally uh, vertically. I love the fact that it's both Google and Amazon doing this in different, with different approaches. You know, you can't ask for two better companies to be innovating in this space. Does Amazon or Google win? Is there a place for both of them? Oh, totally a place for both of them. What about Facebook? Facebook's buying drone companies as well. Mm -hmm. Different mission to connect the world. Yeah. Is it realistic? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So uh, Google's also um, has also bought a drone company to do the you know Wi-Fi or the internet connectivity in the developing world. There, you're competing with satellites on one level. You're competing with balloons. Google has a internet balloon um, project called right. Moon. What's a better way, balloons or drones? Uh, the great thing about balloons is that they sort of stay up there for you know for weeks on end. It's their, their natural instinct is to float. A drone's natural instinct is to you know is to, is to fall. Um, the great thing about the the drones is that they can stay in one place, whereas the balloons kind of fly float around with the winds. I think it's a case for both of them. So there's no one answer. So do you see these companies on a collision course? No, it's all complimentary. This is the, this is the first minute of the day of the drone age. Um, there, you know, there is room for everybody. How omnipresent will drones be in the future? I think on farms, they'll be everywhere. I think they'll increasingly see them um, in sports events. Um, this is how cameras are carried. They'll see drones um, in, over their cities. Um, maybe they'll be police drones, maybe they'll be doing delivery. How will they change our lives? How did Google Street View change your life? You know that you can open up your phone and see the world around you with increasing resolution at ground level. Now, you can see it from air level as well, but those maps were taken a year ago. To be able to get that same notion of simultaneous information about the world around us, that we can see real-time, high-resolution data. This can now be taken to the air. How worried should we be about robots taking our jobs, or even a step further, human extinction? You went there. I went there. <laughs> human extinction, okay. Um, <laughs> so, when you're looking at drones, I mean, these are by and large doing jobs that are not being done at all right now. Well, there is a UPS guy taking the package from the truck and putting it on my doorstep. There is. Uh, I think that's going to be a ways off, actually. Um, UPS is, is pretty good at what they do. When it comes to drones, these are largely doing jobs that are not being done. Drones are good, robots are good at doing jo jobs that are dull, dirty, and dangerous. Um, these are jobs people either shouldn't do or don't want to do. How much are these things going to cost? I mean, is this going to be economical for a farmer to have multiple drones flying sure. over his crops? Well, today they cost $750. Maybe, you know, in a few years they'll cost a few hundred dollars. Um, you might not even buy one. You might just buy the data. You know, the cost of the drone is immaterial to compare to the the value of the data that it generates. Will robots ever be able to feel? Will they have intentions? We tend to assume that, you know, intelligence is defined as human intelligence, but there's other kinds of intelligence. The internet is, is you know, much better than us at many things. Perhaps it's already intelligent on some level that we can't define. By the time we recognize that computers are intelligent, they will have surpassed us. Um, this singularity may have already happened. It's just not on a dimension that we can measure. Well, intelligence, a certain kind of intelligence, is one thing, but what about emotional intelligence? Will computers ever have emotions? I don't know. Yes. Depends, <laughs> depends, on, depends on how you define it. And is that dangerous? Is that scary? Should we be scared? I generally assume that technology will empower us, allow us to do what we do better, 
Um, but, um, you know, we'll see. What do you want to do with 3D robotics? What's the long-term plan? Just to make these things um, as easy um, and ubiquitous as possible. If we can just put these in the hands of regular people and let them do extraordinary things, we will have won. You know, I've, I've been very lucky to be in the right place at the right time. I failed out of, out of, out of college. Um, it didn't do particularly well in school even after that. Um, I think that there's no particular genius here. I think this is, a, this is a, just very lucky to be the birth of the internet um, in Silicon Valley at the, at the right time. If I have a talent, it's connecting the dots. I've been, able to, I've been privileged enough to see the dots early on and good enough at connecting them to see where it was going. You've written three books. Will we see another? I am busy. Um, I don't think you can run a company and write a book at the same time. So of all the things you've done, what's been the most fun? What do you enjoy most? What, what I enjoy is, is, is every Friday we fly. And, um, you know, we, we, we get together with, um, we have a, an open house. People in our community come together, they show what they're doing, and every Friday, my jaw is on the floor again. It's, you know, it's emails and spreadsheets and meetings all week, and then on Fridays, I see drones do things that I've never seen before. It's as amazing today as it was in 2007 when I started with my kids. What's next for Chris Anderson? Uh, more drones, bigger company, um, getting more people to experience what I've been lucky enough to experience for the last five years. How do you want to be remembered? Um, that I helped start an industry that changed the world. Chris Anderson, CEO and founder of 3D Robotics, thank you so much. Thank you.